Welcome to Symmetry, Structure, and Tensor Properties and Materials, Lecture 24. Uh, we have already started to add uh, mirror planes and rotations to our lattices. Now we're going to, um, we have put off the, um, doing the P3 because there is a slight complication in that you can add the mirror planes in a couple different ways. So what this tells us is that um, uh, so far, we could sort of say, ah, I've got a lattice, and I insert point groups into those lattice points, and I get a space group. What this proves is that actually, just because I have a particular space group, uh, sorry, a particular point group, and I put it into a particular lattice, it does not mean it defines only one space group. Here we're going to show you that it's possible to have a uh, the same point group being put in but in different locations in the lattice and so by by putting it in a different location then you end up uh, with um, you know two different uh, space groups. Of course if you put the point group exactly in the same place and the symmetry elements in the same place then of course we get the same thing but here it's just showing you that if you insert them in a couple different places you can uh, you know two different places you get two different space groups so point group plus lattice even if the point group and lattice is the same doesn't necessarily identify a unique space group because where you put in those uh, point groups matter So let's uh, start off here by uh, drawing the uh, lattice that is compatible uh, with threefold axis and put the threefold axis in itself, right? So if I do that, recall that this is a unique reduction of the thing. Let's suppose I call this. Uh, right hand coordinate system T1, this is T2, I remember just looking at the symmetry through the middle here, I did not draw it very well, but these are isosceles triangles, and I have threefold axes that are located not only over here, but I showed you with our previous theorem um, that we also can prove that we have these uh, threefold axis in the middle. So now we got a problem and we say, well, how do I add a mirror plane to this? Because it seems that um, uh, there, there doesn't seem to be really a way to do it because these are at 60 degree angles. And so how can I add a mirror plane? Well, this is where we need to step back. And let me draw uh, one way to see how you can add the plane because um, you know we need to add it to an edge where the symmetry works so we're typically looking for square rectangular type type edges and if you uh, look very carefully here you can see that there is one equivalent rectangular uh, lattice here. Actually, you'll notice that there's another one shown here. One sort of an orientation to the original uh, standard cell. And so what you start to realize is that uh, there's kind of two types of ways to put in the mirror planes that would be consistent with each other. Uh, notice how um, in the uh, rectangle, uh, this edge of the rectangle and this edge of the red rectangle, I can have mirror planes go through a uh, threefold axis uh, in the center of the standard cell. Alternatively, notice that there's a, uh, a 
a red uh, one here that goes along the edge, and there's going to be a blue one that goes along the edge. And uh, so there's going to be uh, different ways to put it in. If I put in this one first, this red one, it's going to be compatible with this blue one because it rotates 120 degrees. You see that. It's a little bit harder to see that in the case of the, um, if I put it in at the edge here, you can see from 120 degrees here, it's compatible with this one that also goes through the center. So there's kind of two ways uh, to put them in. Um, I could um, kind of put them in crossing through here, or I can put them in along the you know cell edges. So if you look at the, the red and the blue that are passing through here, they are perpendicular to the edge. So let's draw that here. case where I'm drawing kind of through these are perpendicular to uh, the translation vector with the black right where if you look here the once I decide to put it along the edge there it also is compatible with Along here, so it's kind of two ways to put them in perpendicular or a parallel, and they're at, uh, um, in a way, two different sites. If you... So, with those two options for putting in the planes perpendicular or parallel, we're going to have to now pick our nomenclature to match that. So, uh, P3 is obviously the, um, uh, the lattice and the rotation we put in, but uh, in this particular case, this first number refers to um, uh, something that would be going in perpendicular to the cell edge, the standard cell edge. And this is what's happening parallel to the cell edge. So, in other words, if we draw our, our little... Um, Standard cell now. I'll actually do this first to try to make myself more accurate. I'm going to put the planes in parallel to the cell edges. Consistent with these are all mirror planes, and um, of course, uh, you can see by the symmetry here, it's going to require one also to be going through here, and then. Consistent. If you draw your motifs around them, you'll see that everything uh, is uh, consistent. Because don't forget, there's another one that's coming through here, and another one coming through here. So notice, in this case, there's two different kinds of threefold axes. When I draw them along the edge, uh, parallel to the edge, which is why this is the M is located parallel to the cell edge, and I have nothing perpendicular to the cell edge. If I did, it wouldn't be compatible because they're not at 90 degrees. So um, I have to put a 1 in here, which just basically means identity, right? There's nothing, there's no mirror plane there. So this is telling me that um, I did not put the mirror plane in perpendicular to the standard cell edge. I put it in parallel to the standard cell edge. All these planes are compatible. And notice that I get two kinds of uh, threefold axes. I have the threefold axes where the mirror planes pass through it, and I have the threefold axes that's um, you know induced in the center here from the uh, 
uh, threefold compatibility we talked about before, and it's actually different because it doesn't have any uh, mirror planes passing through it. And so that's the P3-1M. Uh, now, keeping that in mind, let's look at the, the other case. Note that now we're going to insert it perpendicular to the cell edge, and we have nothing parallel to the cell edge in this case. So now I'm going to place There. Two there. Two there. Two there. Two there, etc. So notice that each uh, in each case. But in each case, uh, the threefold axis, uh, every one of them has, you know, these uh, uh, three, uh, uh, essentially the threefold axis has MMs going through it. So every single one is the same. Every threefold axis um, is the same. And so that would be P through M1. Now, I'm going to go back and do the other one in a second, but let's do this one over here. We already know from before. Uh, or the theorem showed us that if we have parallel mirror planes, then we're likely to get, I mean, we will have a glide planes bisecting the, so for each parallel set of planes that you have, uh, you would have a uh, glide plane passing through it like that. I draw some of these other things parallel, you'll see that you have some uh, lines, glide planes that are parallel uh, to those as well. So that's what the P3M1 would look like with uh, all of its uh, glory. Now let's go back and over here on the side just to show you the difference. Um, we'll show you P three one M, and hopefully I won't get too pixelated here. Etc. So, and of course, uh, what that means is that we would have glide planes also coming through here. Draw this correctly, but you'll see that gives you evidence of um, of P three one M is that you get this little bow tie inside the standard cell. So you see how there's like a, a bow tie.
appears with these glide planes when you have the P3-1M. So this difference between P3-M1, where we have inserted the mirror plane perpendicular to the um, to the edge to the edge of the standard cell, which is a translation vector, and where we've inserted parallel uh, to that. 